You guys are watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Here's what's coming up on today's show. OTAs, the majority of them have wrapped. There's actually another small one after mandatory minicamp, but for the most part, OTAs are over. So a final batch, new, almost only new names. There's like one or two repeats there of winners and losers. And at the end, we'll do a little mini mandatory minicamp preview for you guys as well. Our first OTA winner about the sixth round rookie Eric Scott Jr. They got that Dan Quinn wanted oh so bad with some injuries going on right now at the cornerback spot Trayvon Diggs in and out of OTAs not too concerned there Stephon Gilmore getting some vet days and Sean Reitman might be a bit banged up Eric Scott actually got some first team reps at OTAs and was the right place right time of a Peyton Hendershot drop turning into an eye and hopefully that's not a consistent factor there but Jordan Lewis seems like might start the year, or at least training camp, I should say, on the pup list. Uh, Israel Mukwamu and Kelvin Joseph are working at nickel corner right now. So as far as your outside corners go, well, Diggs, Gilmore, Wright, and Scott. And Deron Bland, by the way, is also getting some run at outside corner because they want to cross him at both. We'll get to Deron Bland in a little bit, by the way. Uh, but that's noteworthy for the Cowboys, and I think he's making some plays. It's always a good thing. I I'd like to... Be very excited about another uh, day three find in that defensive backfield. Six round corners and safeties. Cowboys have crushed for some reason. Now we will have all the Cowboys minicamp coverage you guys can want. Get started on June 6th. Runs through the 8th. So make sure you guys are subbed right here to the Cowboys report for more free videos. We will stay in the secondary with Deron Bland as our next player up here. He's been getting work at both outside corner and eh, not so much nickel, but he played nickel last year. I think that is valuable for Deron Bland. And I wonder if maybe not so much for this year, but more for next year if and when Stephon Gilmore, maybe Trevon Diggs aren't here, if the Cowboys want to cross-train Bland as an outside corner. They didn't give him that many reps on the outside last year. Uh, and I think maybe they had some regrets. They didn't just weren't fully trusting uh, in, in that category. But having Bland on the outside long term could make life easier on this Cowboys team, whether that's Kelvin Joseph, Mukwamu, Lewis and the nickel, or somebody else altogether. Because you're not going to have Gilmore and Diggs two years from now. You might only have one of them. So if Bland can be your other outside corner, that's a hell of a draft pick you found in the end. You guys, I'm sure, have been following OTAs just like me because uh, it's June. If you've been watching the show, you just love the Cowboys, right? So name a Cowboys OTA winner for me at the pinned comment of today's show. If an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. To offense we go now. Hunter Lipke, the fullback slash running back, H-back, tight end hybrid there. Uh... Patrick Walker, friend of the show, uh, made note that Lipke got some reps with the ones. And Mike McCarthy, historically, likes fullbacks. John Kuhn, right? He's, he's liked, when he's been in charge fully of the offense, he's liked a fullback. That would be either Hunter Lipke, maybe Princeton Fant, who we've actually got on our, on our tight end depth chart, by the way. It's a H-back role uh, out of Tennessee. Lipke at North Dakota State was a little bit more in that Kyle Juszczyk mold. He was involved in the passing game. He was involved as a runner. He wasn't the full-fledged blocker. But what do the Cowboys not have right now in this running back room? Where are they thin? Where, where, what do they not have from a role perspective? A, a, a short yardage back. If Hunter Lipke could prove, hey, I can catch a little bit, I can run a little bit, I can block a little bit, that, you know, fourth running back, fourth tight end role could all be solved by Lipke, plus there's a much Im immense special teams value. I want to see him in camp in the preseason because of the UDFAs, this is a really intriguing option for the Dallas Cowboys. Next up on the winners, I will cheat and put both Jalen Tolbert and Timmy Fehoko on this list. Look, Jalen Tolbert spoke with the media, and I'll give him credit. Uh, not that there's anything else you could have said. He knew last year was bad. He knew it was not a good season, and he's got to be better this year. So far, seems like that's the case. Not only from just a play perspective, but from a confidence perspective. I've seen the, the phrase, Tolbert's moving faster. When I see that, given what we saw last year from Tolbert, I view that as not a, oh, you see, he's faster now. I think it means he's moving more confidently. 
And that was a problem last year forward. He had lost complete confidence. I think he'll be better. Low bar, I know, this year. Fehoko, though, appears to have the edge in the wide receiver four battle, at least for now. I will make note, we've had plenty of praise for Fehoko in previous, you know, last year's OTA videos. But there is room for both of those guys on the roster, alongside probably Kevontae Turpin as your main return specialist slash gadget guy on offense. But Dennis Houston is there. They drafted Jalen Brooks, Ontario Drummond. Last year's UDFA uh, guy everyone liked outside of Houston. Jalen Moreno Cropper is this year's guy. I kind of like David Durden as a big size uh, piece. So the Cowboys have some receiver five, receiver six options, but you want one of them to emerge as a full-fledged wide receiver four. So pick one of those wide receiver fours for me. JT for Jalen Tolbert, SF for Simi Fehoko. Who do you think ends up emerging in that role? Go ahead and sound off for us in the comment section right now. To the offensive line, Matt will let's go. The offensive tackle slash some guard. I do think, and the way I, when the report came out that, well, let's go got some run at left guard, I was like, oh, he's almost 6'8". There's a very modern era, like, you know, 2000-ish and beyond. Not many, really any successful 6'8 or 6'7 half guards. Some dating previous years, you can find a few players, maybe some for the Cowboys. But the way I viewed that was as, okay, they're giving him right tackle and left guard reps. That is a, he could try to play all four spots. That is a, for the new offensive line coach, Mike Solari, a sign to me that this team likes him. That's the way I view it. Maybe a little bit less so of like, he's your left guard, which I'd be down with, don't get me wrong. But a, this is a player we want as that 6th, 7th, 8th offensive lineman active every week to give us extra depth. So though, again, size is not a normal left guard. Some exceptions, not very many of them, especially very few modernly. But I think that the reps are a sign the Cowboys are high on him. Now, today's show is made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. They're giving you a 125% deposit bonus when you head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code COWBOYS125. You can bet on anything. You bet on the NFL. You can bet, of course, on the NBA. Game three odds. Denver, a two-and-a-half-point favorite on the road against the Miami Heat to keep defying expectations at every turn and twist. The over-under, 21 or 214.5, I should say. As I forgot a whole hundreds there. Uh, I, I'm i a big Jamal Murray guy. I, I think Denver wins, but Miami, man, they keep, they keep, they keep impressing me. So, Bet on Denver, bet on Miami, bet on the over for Bam Adebayo, the under for Murray, Jokic. Maybe you bet on the under for Michael Porter Jr. again. It's rough, man. Go to other sportsbook partner, though. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code COWBOYS125. Our last winner, Sam Williams. I think the internal message for Sam has been keep maturing, keep becoming a true full-fledged professional because the upside is, is immense. Do the things that you want your year two guy to learn more about in terms of being in the NFL. It's how every young player is, right? Sam Williams is drawn praise from Mike McCarthy. Hyphen was a potential year two breakout guy. He was pretty good last year. I was very pleased with what we got out of Sam Williams in year one. I, I was not expecting this level of tackle for loss production. I really wasn't. He, he was a up and down run defender. I think he was kind of miscast. Uh, in his role at Ole Miss of almost being a five technique at times, as a pure edge, much better. So I like Sam Williams. I like the player a lot. I think he could have a – I might be getting ahead of my uh, ahead of my skis here. Double those sack numbers? I think it's possible. OTA losers now. Unfortunately, Luke Schoonmaker, who would have been on this winner's list. Uh, the way the Cowboys, as I understand it, tend to do OTAs is – they kind of split them up a little bit. The the veterans, the more experienced guys, go on one side of the field. The younger guys, the developmental pieces, go on the other side. Most of the rookies in year one, they're they're, they're on the far side. They're, they're they're doing more like learning stuff, right, as opposed to like implementation and, and drills and that. They're they're just with the the, the, the young guys. They're they're learning new things. Scootmaker was not. He was on the veteran side, but has a foot issue, plantar fascia concern, so he's in a boot right now. I don't know how if he's going to do much at minicamp. I think he'll be good to go in time for training camp. 
But putting him out there with, with the, the older guys for the most part, I think it's because of how they felt about him in, in the tight end room, where, they, where he felt they all fit together of like, hey, you know what? They've got Ferguson. They, they've got Hendershot. They've got McEwen. And they were still giving Schoonmaker big-time reps. That is important and hopefully continues once he's back to 100% at training camp. DeAndre Hopkins, yes, he's a Cowboys OTA loser because Hopkins was going around earlier this summer telling people, as Brian included from what I can gather, he wants to be a Cowboy. He wants to be a Cowboy. He wants, he wants to be in Dallas. Now, was that what Hopkins wanted? Was that Hopkins getting himself linked to Dallas to make a trade happen? I don't know. Who knows? But now it has become Hopkins. What about Dak? And he goes, takes his head. Why the change? Well, from my, from my perspective, and maybe I'm wrong, feels more like the, well, if you're not going to have me, I actually didn't want to date her in the first place. It's like when you ask a girl out and she says no, and then you're like, no. I, I, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a joke. I wasn't serious. Like, that's the way I view it, that Hopkins did want to be in Dallas. But Dallas doesn't want him. They've had chances, and they've passed repeatedly. But Stephen Jones said on Monday about Hopkins when asked directly about it. He's not on this team right now. We went down the road with Cooks. We're very comfortable with Brandon Cooks. We're pleased with our receiving group. If Cooks was not here, Hopkins might be. Cooks is here. So name an OTA loser for the Dallas Cowboys. Any player, even a coach, if you want to go that route. I guess Antonio Callaway uh, was a, is a great one since you know he got cut and is no longer a member of the Cowboys team. But drop that OTA loser for me in the comment section. I am going to put Tristan Vizcaino on this team or on this list, even though he's only kicker right now, for now, on the roster. Uh, he has missed two kicks in each of the open OTA periods, and I, I'll make note right now, it's all that the media gets to see, so maybe he's been perfect outside of that. I don't know if I buy that. Um, the power is not that great, and I think we would all agree the kicker is not on the roster right now. I don't think anyone has immense faith in Vizcaino, so... Hopefully it does better at mini camp, at training camp, but we know competition is coming. It's a matter of when, not if. All right, a brief Cowboys mini camp preview. Starts June 6th, Tuesday, goes to June 8th. Training camp then comes in July. There's a couple of more OTAs after uh, the mini camp ends. That's really just for the young guys. Like, you don't need your vet really there either will still likely be on the lighter side in terms of physical activity, contact, etc. cetera. Uh, does sound like there will be some two-minute drill stuff, which we're going to do here in a little bit. But this is the – it's a ramp-up period. It, it, it's a phase process. It's not going to be overnight, but the Cowboys are trending uh, towards more full activities of real football that matters. So what to watch for? I mentioned that two-minute drill work. Does sound like that's the plan. Good competition period. Uh, something tells you the defense should win those reps, but we'll see what happens from that perspective. It's always good to put, put, put your A offense and A defense against each other. I want to see what the offensive line rotation looks like. Matt Farnick's in there at left guard right now for the most part, but they've worked in others. How does that continue? I doubt we see Terrence Steele, by the way. Number three, how about the young defenders? Who can impress at edge rushers? Is it Sam Williams? Is it, is it Damone Clark? Is it Deron Bland? Who of those, you have your core kind of locked in, who else steps up this year? There, there, will, there will be players, and that will help determine how far the defense ends up going. Number four, kicker. We just thought about it, right? I don't think somebody comes in. Uh, Dallas appears to be in no rush. I'm actually fine with that because it's not like the kicker needs a playbook. <laughs> Kick it to the uprights. Kick it out of the end zone. That, that's it. That, that, those are your two jobs. So I guess onside technically still a factor as well. But, like, I – I think they, the Cowboys are going to be patient. I think that's the right move for them. So we'll see how Vizcaino does at minicamp. Finally, who's out? Is anyone skipping? I don't think anyone will skip. It is mandatory after all. And the Cowboys have had some conversations with Diggs and Lamb, et cetera, about contracts. So really, less of who's skipping and more who's still a little bit banged up from whatever injury they had last season. That is the end of this particular video. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. Type in DC4L in the comment section so we can show you some love moving forward.